All right, what's up guys? I'm going to be filming a review today for something I have been highly anticipating along with a lot of other people in the beauty community. Um, it is the Kat Von D Saint and Center palette. It's beautiful, huge, but beautiful. Anyway, if you have been living under a rock, it is Kat Von D's holiday palette this year. It's basically the equivalent of the Mi Vida Loca remix um, palette that came out last year and it looks like this on the inside. Mine is already kind of banged up because I have been using it quite a bit just kind of testing it out and stuff um the side with all the bright colors on it is called center the side with all of the more i don't know pearly tones is called saint so i'm not gonna do i'm not gonna go through swatches i'm not i don't really like to do swatches of everything when there's like 500 shades in a palette especially since there are links to them so i'm gonna link cap on d's actual video of the swatches in the description box Keep in mind, I believe she was using some sort of like mixing medium or just like Fix Plus or something like that, glycerin perhaps, um, to swatch them because she was doing brush swatch it, brush. She was doing brush swatches. She was doing brush swatches. I actually took notes on this palette. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna kind of go through them because I've kind of taken notes over the past few days that I have been testing it out. Okay, so at first, when I first opened this, I have to admit I was, I wasn't immediately inspired by it because I was just kind of confused. I was, well, not necessarily confused. I was intimidated, I guess I should say. That's probably a better word for it. I was definitely just intimidated by it. Um, mainly because I am not a huge fan of colorful shimmery shades. I like colorful mattes. I do like colorful shimmers. Um, just not all in one palette really. So I was quite intimidated by that. I wasn't really sure what to do with it at first. So of course, you know, I, I've done quite a few looks at this point and my opinion has changed greatly. I'll say that. But anyway, at first I looked at it and I was just so confused by it. I was like, this isn't, this isn't a medium. This is a finished work of art, you know, like this isn't something with which to create more art. I was wrong. I was wrong. Um, but then I was watching a video, I was watching a video that Jay Kissa did, and she suggested kind of shutting one side or the other, which I can see that. Like I can see if they were all kind of laid out in a row, how that would be a lot easier to kind of fathom. This side, kind of same thing, especially this side. This side looks a lot more cohesive when you see it on its own. So I liked that idea, and that definitely helped a little bit, but I will say, that I tend to use both sides with any given look that I'm doing. However, the reason I ended up buying this palette was because I was on Reddit and somebody had done an organized version of it. Basically, they had kind of gone through and kind of organized the colors of the palette in a way that made more sense as if it were going through a spectrum as opposed to all being kind of jumbled up. I get the layout though, and I think it's a great, I think it's great because, you know, Kat kind of explained it's supposed to be like the reflections of different colors in a, stained glass window, which is really cool. I just thought it was a little bit intimidating. That's my problem, I guess. <laughs> but you know, I kind of, I figured it out. Now I will say the formula is really interesting. It's great. I love it. Super pigmented, easy to blend, not a lot of fallout, you know, pretty typical of Kat Von D shades. There are a few that I'm not, like I don't think that there needs to be two really light matte shades in the palette. One of them is pink toned, one of them is yellow toned. So they do kind of serve different purposes, but I don't think that it needs both on my behalf super nitpicky i'll admit that these shades up here i haven't quite gotten a lot of use out of yet but they do work better with glitter glue or even just some some sort of tacky base or like a black base or a white base just anything that's going to make them look you know make them kind of show up because they're quite glittery um quite quite powdery again not a deal breaker you're just gonna have to use like you're gonna have to use glitter glue because they are pigmented. They do hold together pretty well once you have that base. Um, I love that there's a black in here. Like I really, and this is a really good black. This is called Sabbath. I love that there's a black in here. I know a lot of people think, why do you need a black in every palette? Well, it's like, you just don't wanna have to get multiple palettes out. So I love that there's a black in here. That was just a great idea. It's just a matte black. I wish there were more matte shades in here, but the mattes are the mattes that are here are just absolutely incredible. I love the matte form and I especially love Kat Von D's matte formula, so that might be why I'm like wishing there were more matte shades just because I love her mattes so much that I'm like, oh, why aren't there more? But anyway, I really do love this palette. Like I said, I, let me see, since I'm not gonna go through and swatch all of them, I'm just gonna kind of swatch a few of my favorites and 
like I said, you can go look at Kat Von D's video if you want to see all of them swatched. But, and some of my favorites kind of surprised me. Like I didn't think that these would be my favorite shades out of the palette. And one of them is Sacred Heart right here on the Saint side, right there. Okay, this is Sacred Heart. It's like a, I don't know, it's really interesting. It's like peach and coral and I don't know, it's just a really unique color and it's super pigmented. And it really, really shows up on your eye. Like I did like a one shadow look the other day and just like all around my eye and it just really shows up. It's a really cool color. Of course, I love the shade Devil. This is the matte orange shade. It is perfect. <laughs> like there has never been a better matte orange shade in my opinion. Um, I love Exodus, which is like this green color. I don't know. I've just, I mean, yes, it does have some micro glitter in there, but I basically treat it like a matte shade because that's kind of what it shows up as on my eye. Um, Stigmata is another one of my favorites and is one of the best formulas. Oh my gosh, it is so pretty. Like it is. I mean, it's so pretty. Sorry, there's like lipstick up here. <laughs> I was like using my hand earlier <laughs> to like, anyway. My other favorite shade is Relic and it is the like gold yellow shade. I mean, I'm sensing a theme here among all of these, but I also really like the purples. Again, Exorcism appears to have a little bit of shimmer in it, but it actually blends out pretty well. Um, it kind of, it comes off on the eye really well. When I first watched it, when I first got it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be the dud. And then there is Worship, which is the other purple shade. And it's weird because usually purples to me like swatch better than they look when I actually get them on. But these are the opposite. Like they don't swatch that well. Those are the purples right there. They don't swatch that well, but it's what I'm wearing on my eyes. And granted, yes, I did use the Worship shade, the shimmery purple shade, I used it wet. Even when I was using it dry, just to kind of blend it through my crease. I mean, it really worked out. Like, I, I don't know, I really like it. I really like this palette. I'm really happy I got it. Oh, and then there's this blue shade, which I'm like pretty much swatching them all for you. And that's exactly what I thought I wasn't gonna do. But anyway, the blue shade's really pretty. Obviously works better when you apply it wet, but I that was a really light swatch. I didn't really dig my finger into it. I don't want to dig my finger into these because I don't want to like ruin them. <laughs> and I don't want to like use them up. This palette isn't, it's like to me, I might be one of the only ones who think this, but to me, this was not love at first sight. To me, this was get to know you a little better. And then over time, you kind of love it even more than some of the makeup products that you loved when you first opened it. It's really strange. I don't really have a whole lot of like bad things to say about it. Like, like I said, I kind of went through my first impressions and told you what I thought about a lot of the things at first. But you know, aside from the fact that there are two matte white shades that are two different tones, which in my opinion, there doesn't need to be. I mean, the rest of the shades are actually really good and I've gotten a lot of use out of them and I've been able to get really creative with it which I at first didn't think I was going to. Um, I can also create pretty wearable looks that are still colorful with it. Um, kind of like the purple and gold look. I mean, anything is wearable for me. I will wear anything anywhere. So when I say something's wearable, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. But I'm really excited to use this palette for fall. I'm excited about the purples. I'm glad that there's a green shade in there. And yeah, I of course love all the like warm red, orangey, fiery shades. Anyway, I think I have rambled on enough about this palette for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the demo. I've done quite a few looks with this. I, today I'm gonna just kinda do probably a different one than I've done yet. So this isn't gonna be a first impression. I have used, yeah, I have used all of these shadows. I'm going to start with, and I've already primed my eyes. I'm gonna start with Martyr. It's this like camel brown shade on the center side. I've got so far blended out really well. I love this shade. I love it. Okay, now I'm gonna stay on the same side and I'm gonna go into the shade Exorcism. I'm just gonna use this little, like a smaller brush, the Essential Crease Brush by Real Techniques. I'm really taking the blend. I'm just gonna put that right into my crease alongside that warm brown shade. I'm gonna bring that up kind of high. I don't really want that brown shade showing too much. slowly build that color up into my crease, like concentrated right into the deepest part of my socket. And then 
I'm just kind of blending the edges in circular motions. I'm basically gonna be hiding that brown, except for just, just the edge of it. And the brown just helps this purple blend out. I have really deep sockets and almost like, and I have pretty thick eyelids. So I have to really build the pigment into my crease because otherwise it just kind of gets lost in there. I don't, although I don't have hooded lids because my lids are so thick, they do kind of bunch up on each on themselves. I'm actually gonna go in with the other purple shade in the palette, which is called Worship. And I'm not gonna worry too much if that goes slightly into my crease. Um, I, I've mentioned before, I don't really mind shimmer in my crease. I just, it's not something that I think just detracts from my eye looks. And I'm gonna put this one actually on my inner corner. This is gonna be kind of a halo eye here. I just tuck it right in there and build it up. Now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna wet my brush. And since I've already got that main kind of purple blended out there, the shimmery one, I'm gonna go in and wet my brush and then I'm just gonna kind of intensify that shimmer. I'm just gonna use the Milani Make It Last setting spray. Look how, I'm gonna zoom you in here and show you how much shimmery, how much more shimmery that gets once you wet that shadow. And you just barely even have, like, that is just incredible to me. I love, love this purple. Okay, so I've given that pigment, um, so I've given that eyeshadow the wet some time to like kind of dry down on my eyes and now I'm just gonna kind of go in and blow out the edges a bit and like blend out. Because once it's dry, it's obviously a little bit more easy to manipulate on your eye and I'm just gonna kind of blend the edges. I want this purple to come out pretty far because my sockets are so deep. The color will kind of get lost in my eye socket. I'm actually even gonna go into that matte purple shade and I'm gonna use that to kind of blow out the edges just a little bit more. Just barely touching my brush to that edge though. So once I'm happy with that, now I'm gonna go in with this one right here. This one's called Relic. I'm also gonna use this one wet. I'm gonna use that same little shader brush. It's just, I love this brush because it is so small and it's really dense, um, but it's just like it's tiny. So I'm gonna go back into that setting spray. Uh, it's a tip I found on the internet. Just spray your setting spray like into the cap or into a little palette if you use like Fix Plus or something. And then just dip your brush in there because it saves a lot of product. Otherwise you're just spraying your brush and like losing a lot of product, which when I found that, when I saw that on Reddit, I was like, it was, it was such an aha moment. All right, so into that yellow shade and I look like a LA Lakers themed <laughs> kind of eye look. I've just, oh, I love it. I love it. That yellow, it is so, I mean, it's freaking beautiful. This is a zoom in moment here. And I didn't even have to like put a lot of product on my brush. I didn't have to bear, I didn't have to dig into the pan too much for this. Just so you know. Okay, again, I'm gonna kind of let that dry down and then I'll kind of diffuse the edges a little bit, but I don't want to mess with it too much while it's wet. Now that that's sort of dry before I do my foundation, I'm just gonna kind of blend the edges here a little bit. Back into the yellow, just in the center here. Not as far out as the rest of the yellow, just right there in the center. Okay, now I'm just gonna set that off to the side while I do my foundation. I'm gonna use my Tarte Rainforest of the Sea because why not, I haven't used it in a while, so it's like. I'm gonna do my concealer first because I just have better luck with that sometimes. My beauty blender is like on its last leg because it is dying. It has turned to memory foam and beauty blenders are not supposed to feel like memory foam. They're supposed to be like bouncy and spongy. I'm just gonna highlight my forehead pretty high up. I have this birthmark in the center between my eyebrows. I don't know if you can see it, but 
I lately have been kind of wanting to leave it alone and like let it let it just kind of live because I like it. It's weird, I never liked it. I was always kind of self-conscious of it um, until I had my kid and she has one and I fell in love with hers and hers is really cool. It just kind of goes straight up the middle of her forehead and kind of like an S shape, like a backwards S shape. And then she has it all over her eyelids. Those kind of already faded, but I really kind of started loving mine once I saw my kids. Like it was one of the first things I noticed about her when she was born. I was like, she has my birthmark, oh my God, I love it. And it was bright purple, maroon, red. I feel like most people would be like, what is that? Like, because, you know, most people probably don't know, and if they don't have one, they've obviously, they're obviously not familiar with it, but it's just like a birthmark. It's just like a vascular formation. I don't know. I love mine now. All right, so I'm gonna take an Eco Tools Precision Blush Brush. I like this for blending foundation. Don't know why, just do. Especially like more fluid, liquidy foundations. <laughs> This is a really watery foundation. I feel like the Beauty Blender like soaks up too much of the product, at least in its current state, as it is dying. Now I'm just barely gonna set under my eyes, just to kind of help my shadows blend. I'm just gonna set barely with this Real Technique setting brush. brush. I'm gonna go back into that Martyr shade, the first shade, just again to kind of help the rest of the shades blend. I'm gonna actually use this um, detail crease brush by e.l.f. I'm gonna go into that exorcism shade, that bright purple. The brush doesn't really pick up a lot of pigment, but in this case, that's actually a good thing. guys that is it for my review and demo of the Kat Von D Saint and Center palette. I will probably do some more um, tutorials with this in the future just because I have all these other ideas in my head that I want to do and I'm really excited about it. Just follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you don't already. Um, my username is Smacy which is Smacy with four Y's like it is on YouTube. Um, like this video and subscribe to me if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Peace out.